this second part of lecture one, we're going to look into some uh, key aspects of airline demand analysis. For instance, in a given flight, it's very common, especially for urban spoke carriers, to have passengers flying that fly on that flight that are not necessarily flying only between the airports uh, of origin destination of the flight. So in this particular case, where we are analyzing a flight between Boston and Houston in the US, only 30% of the flu has destination in a, a Houston. And there are more than 40% of um, uh, passengers that have other destinations that refer to other uh, OD pairs. For instance, there are about 10% of the passengers that are flying to uh, Mexico City, while 90% are flying to uh, Los Angeles and uh, a given number of passengers are flying to uh, Onulu and Phoenix, Phoenix. This creates a problem. Uh, which is the fact that because we do have air travel demand defined at the OD level and we have supply defined at the flight le uh, leg level, that it's hard to compare both demand and supply. To this phenomenon, we call it the demand and supply dichotomy. And this makes it hard, for instance, to know if a market is in an equilibrium or not if the airline is profitable in a specific flight leg or if we should offer a, a more capacity in a specific uh, flight leg. This raises the, the, the need uh, to model the airline operations at the network level because only if we model the, the network we can assess what is the way that we do have to supply capacity that responds to the demand that we estimate at the OT market level. And this is something that we're going to use in our course because we're going to look at uh, network uh, models. Besides this fact, there is also uh, the fact that demand for airlines fluctuates a lot, fluctuates per time of the day, fluctuates per day of the week, fluctuates per month, and even in different months, uh, as you know, there are different uh, levels of, uh, of demand. So, because this fluctuation can be uh, quite uh, high and uh, capacity is usually something that is fixed or uh, within some uh, limits, it happens to the airline that sometimes uh, the airline has excess uh, of capacity. So, some resources are being wasted because the, the, the aircraft are flying off empty. In other cases, you see that you are uh, working at uh, the limit. So there is a service quality deterioration. While eventually some other cases, you do have passengers that are left uh, on the ground or that they would like to fly with you and they will not fly with you because you don't have enough capacity. And these, um, results in two um, uh, widely used concepts. The first one is spoilage. And the spoilage reflects the fact that the seats in an aircraft are perishable. That means that, uh, like fruit in the market, if you don't consume within a given uh, uh, time window, they are uh, wasted. They cannot no longer be consumed. For us in the airline world, it means that after you, you initiate your flight, if the seats are not taken, they cannot be uh, used anymore. They cannot be sold anymore. So spoilage refers to this amount of capacity that uh, are, uh, is left empty due to the low demand uh, that you have experienced. On the other hand, we have spillage. And spillage regards the, the number of passengers that eventually would like to fly with us. They will be there to fly with us, but we don't have enough capacity. So we have to leave them out uh, of our operations, so we will not collect revenue from these uh, uh, passengers. So they are uh, potential passengers that are lost. And this is something that ideally the airline would like to avoid, both, both spoilage and spillage. spillage. Ideally, the airline uh, would like to fly with a full uh, aircraft at a fair price paid by uh, the passengers. 
if we go a little bit further in this analysis, you can think about the implications that this may have in terms of uh, fleet composition and the way that you use your um, uh, uh, fleet. So let's see this example all, uh, uh, that uh, spans over five years of a specific airline where you see the demand in the blue line varying. There is some seasonality, so uh, you see more or less the same pattern every year. But there is a, a, a linear um, growth uh, um, in the demand that uh, is expected uh, over the years, or it was observed in the past five years. Uh, it's uh, the way that you would like to see this. Um, and the airline starts with a given fleet in year one, but eventually uh, in year two it acquires two new aircraft. And uh, because aircrafts, uh, the number of aircraft in your fleet are um, an integer number, there is a jump in the capacity that you can offer. There is a band always because you can use the aircraft more or less during a, a given day, but you cannot go beyond the, uh, uh, an upper and lower uh, limit. Eventually, the airline operates this uh, two new aircraft over uh, two and a half years and then acquires a new aircraft in, uh, in year five. And there is a new jump there. Okay, So what happens here is that you're going to see that these jumps will cause these um, moments where you have uh, way more capacity than you should have for the demand that you experience in these markets or on the other way around you do have moments where you lack capacity and you um, have um, a large number of passengers that could have been f flying with you but they are left on the ground so the question is how can an airline solve this problem so how can airlines use some uh, techniques or some approaches to mitigate this large difference that we are seeing here. I'm not going to answer this question now, and I would like to see you in our Q&A sessions to discuss these aspects from the airline fleet composition, utilization, and the mismatch between demand and supply. I'll see you there.